What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Barber Block Podcast, where we're here to talk to real barbers, real people, and have real talk. And so today uh, on this episode, man, we've got another legend in the barbering community here in Arizona. Uh, So please help me welcome Daniel Sin, a.k.a. Unfatable Blade Brown. Blade Brown. There we go. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, sir. I knew I was going to mess that up. I knew I was going to mess it up. (laughs) You've been messing my name up all my life. I, and then I got so many nicknames and street names, so you know, you gotta keep it, gotta keep it move, keep them guessing. You know what I mean? Let, let's go ahead and jump right in. Let's start with that. So, unfatable Blade Brown. Yeah, uh, and then we'll go back to some of the other names. You can bring them up. So, yeah, t- that, tell me, tell me how did that come that, about? That's just like I, I just felt this. Uh, I wanted to cha- have a. I always felt like a, I was writing a. I still am, like a comic book about myself. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and so my comic book character name it just came to me something I made up the unfatable Blade Brown um, I was like Blade Brown I'm brown I'm cold with the blade but there's another Blade Brown from uh, Class Act mm. Kid and Play so Ooh. I had to kind of differentiate with that and then <laughs> unfatable oh you know I'll tell you where unfatable I think came from I, I realized later that there was this group of barbers in LA that I had come across that I became friends with and they were called they had a crew Mm. Different shops, they were in battles, and they were cold, but they were called TCFU, They Can't Fade Us. And I always <laughs> felt like kind of this like distant brother, because I was I from Arizona. Yeah. I met them, I was from Arizona, I did a battle out there and won this battle, mm-hmm. and got all that respect, you know, and I was like, I felt like the Arizona brother, the unfadable. <laughs> <laughs> and also, I'm bald-headed too, so I literally cannot be faded. You know what I'm gotcha. Oh, yeah, man. Yeah. So, so so tell us, uh, so are you originally from Arizona or where are you from? Originally, no. I'm originally from the Southwest. I say I'm, uh, I was born in Colorado, um, born in Denver. I was raised in Colorado Springs and also raised a little bit in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Okay. And uh, yeah, that's, those are the two places where I got all my gang. Yeah. So <laughs> how'd you end up here in Arizona? You know, I, um, <clears throat> I lived both those places all my life, got in a lot of trouble. Just being in the lanes, just doing my thing. And uh, I, I was time for a rebirth. I really had to get out of that. But it was hard to escape that identity, especially with law enforcement um, that I that I built for myself, that reputation, I guess you would call it. Mm-hmm. And I knew I had to just start over. So uh, I actually had a probation officer. I was getting ready to turn 18. Um, probation officer that put me in touch with another dude who was into music. Mm-hmm. He was actually hosting. He had a studio kind of like yours. And uh, he was doing a class for at-risk youth for, like, how to record. Mm. And so my probation officer put me in touch with him. I helped him. The dude, I was already doing some music on my own. Mm-hmm. The dude, like, had me as an assistant. He let me record a song for free. And then uh, later on, he, like, introduced me to somebody who wanted a rapper on their song, right? Mm. But I, I'll get to that. So, like, I wanted to leave Colorado and I was like, I got to go somewhere. I wanted to go somewhere to a bigger city. I was in Colorado Springs. It's kind of like a small pond to me, you know. Yeah. Air Force Academy. Academy. Yeah, Air Force Academy, yeah. um, Garden of the Gods, Pikes Peak. Uh, yeah, but, uh, Fort Carson was where I was closer to, so that was more Army. But, yeah, military all over. Right. And um, it's an ex- it was an experience, you know. So that's I wanted to get out of there. And I was like, L.A. or New York? I don't know if I'm all ready for that yet. You know, I don't, you know, I'm bigger than this spot, but I don't just jump into the, to the ocean now. Right. And uh, so I was thinking like Phoenix sounds cool, and Houston sounded cool. Mm. So I want, I got an opportunity to check out both. So through that probation officer, he hooked me up with this. He was like, or the guy that I met through the probation officer, he was like a couple months later. He's like, yo, I got this dude. He's a pop singer. He wrote a song. He wants to have a rapper on there. I let him. I told him you you would go really good. He'll pay you. I said cool. So I met up with this guy, and uh, and it ends up being like a gospel um, pop song. Mm. It's kind of like a like an in sync, but gospel, you know. And this okay. is in Denver, and I was like, okay, that kind of hit me from the side. I didn't expect that, but <laughs> I myself, I have a relationship with the Lord, you yeah. know what I mean? So that, that's something that I came up with. So there wasn't nothing to me to like, be like, yeah, I, can, I honestly didn't like curse in my music anyway. Right. And uh, being involved with that guy, that was kind of like the stipulation, like I was doing positive music. So it kind of, it just, 
you know, melted in together. So I was like, you know, I could write a verse. It's nothing. Yeah. About the Lord, let's go. <laughs> they pay, and I'm getting paid. <laughs> Give it to me now. So I did that, wrote a little verse, gave it to him, thought nothing of it, went home. And then my girl at the time, we decided we were going to go to a uh, check out um, Houston. We took a cruise out of Galveston. Mm. And so I took a cruise or took a trip out there to Houston and spent a little time in, in Houston and went to Galveston, took the cruise out. And uh, so I just got a chance to kind of like touch. Yeah. You know, so I didn't. So that was for Houston. So then later on, a couple months later, this guy hits me up. I hadn't gone to Phoenix yet. This guy hits me up. He's like, hey, man, that song that you did for me, we're going to do a um, a performance out in Phoenix. Wow. He's like, I'm going to pay for everything. Let's go. I said, all right, cool. So he brought me out to Phoenix, 4th of July. And uh, we stayed at the Embassy Suites. And I was like, wow. Now, this was like 2002. <laughs> and I was like, wow, does palm trees do it? But as soon as I touched down palm trees, I was like, oh, my, I'm in L.A. Right. This is man, Hollywood, bro. The honeys were walking out like, every man. I was like, oh, this is it. I was done. But he was not that bad. Yeah. And uh, so I came out here, and I already, I, I just got to move around. I knew some people. It wasn't like when I went to Houston, I didn't know that many people, you know. So it was more like on a tourist tip uh-huh. where I came here, and I kind of met a few people. And uh, I just said, that's it. I, I'm going to move out there. I told my girl. Came back and said, I'm moving out there in a year. You want to come with me? You know, you can. I just got my barber license. I was on probation. Mm. I was on probation still, so I couldn't leave. And, uh, yeah, so I came out here and made the trip. Graduated barber school. Actually, I was in beauty college. And yeah. I got a barber license. Yeah. And that was in Colorado. Springs. Colorado. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So did she move with you? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> oh, man. Honestly, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, she she, uh, she did move with me. She graduated college early. She was a bad one, and um, real smart girl. And she came out here, and we lived together for about a year and a half, and parted ways. Yeah, just started started living different lifestyles. I mean, I came out here, and for that first year, I didn't have my license transferred yet, mm. but I came out with a little bit of bread. So I was chilling. We moved to uh, Paradise Valley. I was like, I want to make a good, clean start. I want to go in a nice area. Let me find out. And then uh, with a nice area, so I went there. <clears throat> but then I was working. My first job at a barbershop was uh, uh, Faye Tight. So 16th yes. Street. So the contrast of my daily routine. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm going from 16th Street and Broadway to, like, Cactus and Tatum. <laughs> big, big difference. <laughs> big difference. And, uh, and she became a police officer. Uh-oh. And um and I did not become a police. So now now, now you got some conflict of interest, huh? Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. I mean, I wrote a couple of years into it, and then it was like, yeah, we just became too different. You know, first it was my get out of jail free card. Then it was like, nah, can't do that, bro. I was still being immature and running the streets and mm. trying to act unfatable. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so that's um that's how I came out here. She came with me, and then we parted ways. Yeah. So uh, so take me back to. The process of you getting your barber's license. So you said you were on probation. Was it through a program that you got uh, that you went through, or what was that process like? No, surprisingly, I uh, started like I was already messing with clippers when I was a kid. Okay. Um, I want to say twelve years old. I was trying to give myself haircuts, uh, friends haircuts. Thirteen. What was your first pair of clippers? Do you remember Walmart pair of walls? Those black and white. Yeah. You know, those yeah. consumer level walls. Yeah. Those are my liners and my clippers. <laughs> right. Like I adjusted them, yeah. scarred up a gang of people. Per- There's a lot of people out there running with permanent lines. <laughs> the SMP shit y'all doing, I started that shit. <laughs> I was setting the line in permanently in like 93. <laughs> Come over here with some SMP. No, I'm playing. But uh, yeah, no, that was my first set of clippers. Actually, before that, like my, one of my mom's boyfriends, I think we moved in with him. And uh, he had a pair of, like, beard trimmers. But they weren't, it was maybe some Norel codes or something. Mm-hmm. And I, I remember um, they went to the grocery store, and I got went in there and started touching on my sideburn. And then going up and going up. Keep going up. Man, <laughs> I, man I'm looking, and my mom's coming in the door. She's like, well, yeah, I'm home. I'm like, oh, sh-, trying to fumble, throw the hat on. And I'm going to help her with the groceries. She snatches my hat off, and I got damn near a mullet, you know. <laughs> and uh, so she made me run around with that for a couple of days. And that was my first real, like, experimenting. But, yeah, like 12, 12 years old, got those walls. Yeah. So what, 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 at what point did you develop that passion for barbering that you decided, like, this is the direction I want to go in? Well, I mean, I, I just got an affinity for it. Off the bat, as soon as yeah. I, I was just like, 
I saw Steve Harvey's lineup, you know, watching a Steve Harvey show and just people on TV. And then, I, you know, my friends, I would like kind of see their like, let me adjust it and I'd hit the barbershop up every once in a while. And uh, I just really wanted to get that line right. I just had this desire. Maybe it's the artist in me. Like there's like OCD about it. I want to make that crispy. And, yeah. um, and also it's real social. Yeah. The gathering of it. When I would get people around for haircuts, we just, you know, shooting the shit and just hanging out and, you know, the, you know, just like playing barbershop, basically. Right. That was something I really uh, was natural with. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I was getting a lot of trouble in school. We went over there. I was getting a lot of trouble from all, all those teen years for whatever reasons. Mm -hmm. And I, I just decided, like, I got kicked out, I think, five schools mm -hmm. um, throughout high school in two different states. And... Real rebellious, and uh, I decided I was gonna graduate early. Yeah, and I got my GED at sixteen. Okay, so I mean, I was like, I'm not just gonna drop out. I go ahead and chest out. I got you know. So in my eyes, I was graduating early. Right, and um, so I did that, and of course, my mom was like, "What are you gonna do? You've been cutting hair. Maybe you should think about you know being a being a barber, or doing some hair stuff." And uh, and I was like, I don't know. No, it wasn't like the cool, the coolest thing to be a barber at that time. It didn't hit like right. it's hitting now at all. Right, right. The barber movie Barbershop hadn't even dropped yet. You right. know what I mean? So, like, I think the only barber movie at that point was, like, Who's the Man? If you know, <laughs> I'm dating myself, of course, but Who's the Man? Let's go check that out, all you young, young cats. But uh, it wasn't the most popular thing, and I considered it. And then I was like, you know what? Let's go. Yeah. So um, I went and found a school. Uh, got a, a grant, I believe, um, to to go to school. And then I started off as a cosmetologist. Because mm -hmm. then my philosophy at that time was like, you know what, if I'm going to learn, I might as well get it all. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to make money off of all of it, right? And uh, so I went and well into it, I just realized I didn't want to do nails and makeup. And uh, I was already known as the fader there. Anybody yeah. that come into the school, they can come to me. You know, right. if there was a class, I taught the class on how to fade. Yeah. And uh, so I convinced them. I said, hey, can we do a barber class, like a barber mm. license? And they said, yeah, we can, you can do a barber license. So I switched over and I graduated with my instructor or my barber's license. Yeah. And uh, but it took me about three years. So I started at 16, 16. So it took me 19. Yeah. Yeah, I believe so. And so what was your once you got the, the license, what was your first shop experience like? Uh, my first shop experience, well. I'll be on. Actually, I, I lived there. I was finishing up my probation, and I got my license, and I came out here. So I didn't work in a barber shop in okay. Colorado. Okay. And uh, I came out here. I didn't have my license yet. It took me a few months to transfer my hours because I was so new. So I had to take the test in Colorado twice. Failed the first one. Mm -hmm. Took the second one. Passed it. Then I came out here and I take my test out here. Failed the first one and took the second time and passed it. Okay. So four tests and. Uh, I, my shop experience as soon as I got my license was actually no hold on my first shop experience was Great Clips out here in Colorado oh in Colorado that's why I did work at it for with hair in Colorado <laughs> briefly at Great Clips yeah and I was like you know what I'm gonna go ahead and get my timing down and they pay you for uh, instruction I was like I can always take some more instruction to just you know make myself better while they're paying me right and uh, I didn't plan on staying there so I didn't need to build all all kinds of clientele yeah. And uh, so I did that, and everybody would be like, "Don't worry, great this, don't worry, great this." But I saw, I saw, I could see the good in it. Right. So I jumped in, did that. Had them actually transfer me out here, so I didn't have my license out here. I had to wait, and I worked as like a, like a receptionist a couple of times, mm -hmm. a couple of shops, uh, and then uh, I worked at like a call center for a little bit, met some people. But I was handing people my card at the malls. Yeah. And I was getting clients there, cutting them at my crib, or going to them, mm. and. Then when I finally got my license, Faye Tight. Yeah. And I remember Faye Tight because when I was working at Great Clips in Colorado, I was talking about moving to Phoenix, mm -hmm. talking about how I'm into music and, talk, you know, doing hair, obviously. And a client that I had, he was like, oh, are you going to go to that school out there for music? And I was like, what school? And he's like, it's called the Conservatory of Recording Arts and Sciences. And I was like, I ain't know nothing about it, but let me look into it. Mm -hmm. And then uh, he's like, oh, yeah, and that barbershop out there, man, all the ball players play, all get cut out there. I was like, what? He's like, yeah, fade tight. And I was like, oh, <laughs> well, let me see what's up. Let's go. So right. I end up 
that school, I looked into it a year later. I ended up going to that school. Yeah. Yeah, and I came out here and I went and worked over there uh, for Justice for, for a little bit. Yeah. So what? So you had you, you you were doing two things. You were doing music and barbering. Mm-hmm. And so how did you fuse the two to like create? You know, because to create your your brand or whatever it is you were going after, what did you do? Was there was were they separate or did you mix them together? And what I mean, was your plan? to me, they naturally went hand in hand. I yeah. never considered them separate. I, you know, you remember that four elements of hip hop thing that used to you know people used to be big on. It was like b boy, tag artist, DJing, yeah, uh, MCing, and I always looked at like barbering was like the fifth element. Gotcha. <laughs> and gotcha. I always, I always felt somebody that that was my culture. Yeah. So I, that was all me. All those, I could do them all. You know, I could a little bit. I'm not a master of all of them, but I can do them all. And so it just was part of it was natural. Yeah. For that that element to be in there. Um, so where 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 did, what or how far did you go with the music career? Is that something you're still doing to this day? Or <laughs> right, right. So uh, as far as I went with the music career, let's see, I, it changed. Yes, I still do music now. For fun, I still love writing. I don't really um, perform. I freestyle. Mm. I do a lot of freestyles uh, here and there. I'm always down for that. I'm down to get on a song, but I haven't put out a project, and I haven't like fully um, tried to pull out a put out a project. Yeah, and that probably being now I'm doing a little bit more now. Mm. Uh, but my younger years, I, I went so I went to the conservatory, and I got a chance to kind of see that side of the music industry. And I wanted to become a producer. So I went as an engineer and wanted to become a producer. And as I got more into it and I went to New York for a, for a, an internship, I uh, just um, didn't really, I realized the industry was not what I thought it was at that time. Mm. And uh, so I, it was, seemed kind of bogus to me. And I would already got a taste of cutting as a barber. And I was like, that shit is the real rock star. That's just the real star <laughs> shit. I'm, I'm like... Barbers are the real rappers. So I started putting out my business card like it was an album. I change it up every so many so many months. And yeah. I was just like, yo, what? Because then I get real fans who are paying me. Right. And they really do want to see me. Like, a lot of the rappers, you got to have this facade. And you got to act as a person. And what about when you change? Mm. You know what I mean? So it, it just, you got to stick to that. You know, it's hard to grow. I was like, nah, this is already where it's at. I felt that. And uh, I just kind of switched it over. Now yeah. I do music for therapeutic, for fun. I enjoy, you know, like making music with a dozen people. But not trying to chase it to be a star. Gotcha. Gotcha. And so now you're working in Fade Tight, building your clientele. Uh, what was that experience like? And, uh, you know, was it something that happened pretty fast? Was it something that took a while? Or how did you gain, you know, you being a newcomer to the state, you know, gaining trust? Nobody knows who you are. Right. Not only that, like at that time, like this was, I'm not only a newcomer, but I got a, a fairly, nobody knows what I am. Ethnically, you know, I'm kind of ambiguous. Some people, you know what I mean? So that yeah. was kind of a, a a tough thing. So I went in there. I was already that. But the way I dressed was kind of crazy, too. I've always been a bit outlandish. Yeah. And I always had, like, some crazy dickies on, like, some bright blue dickies with some red chucks and, and like, a <laughs> uh, like, a Tony Montana Scarface basketball <laughs> jersey with, like, I think I had, like, Spike chains on my I like oh I was like punk rock kind of mix you know <laughs> west coast gangster punk rock style that I had and uh so that was another thing so I mean that wasn't like pulling the people in um a lot of people were real what's the word uh, apprehensive mm-hmm. I was sitting in my chair at first I remember the first day Justice let me nobody sat in my chair yeah <laughs> shockingly <laughs> <laughs> Justice let me cut so let me see what you got I was like oh yeah you cool you cool so uh we did that um I cut there for, I'm not sure how long, but it wasn't maybe a couple of months. I really didn't cut there a long, long time Mm -hmm. until I switched up because that ride was getting, living in Paradise Valley. And uh, I moved to another, from there I jumped to a bunch of different shops. And then I went to like, gosh, man, you think, you name it, I've been there. (laughs) Yeah, all the old shops from back in the day. So I found everyone to AGs. Uh But, um, oh. Who was another good shot? Oh, uh, Nappy by Nature. Yeah. I remember I was on the West Side. Hot Chocolate was a shop back then. I don't know if you remember that shop. I don't remember that one. Uh, but yeah. That was a hidden shop. Top, top. What was the shop on 27th Ave at the time? It was like, I forget, man. But I worked with a lot of <laughs> shops out here. Just kind of getting a feel for what I wanted. Also, yeah. 
just consuming education. Right. You know, because I knew I, I wasn't going to work in a shop shop forever. And I, I knew I was going to develop my style. So I get a little bit here, a little bit there, just see how things move. Yeah. And, uh, just exploring. So at, at what point, you know, you, you, you're going shop to shop, hopping, and then did you ever decide, like, you know, and I'm a plant somewhere and this is where I'm going to be? And, you know, what, what happened at that point? What, was there any kind of thought or was it like I'm just going to be this nomad and you know, right. do my thing? Yeah, that was a thought for a minute. Um, I, I remember at one point I was thinking, seeing other shop owners, and I was like, man, that, some of these cats were not looking run down, and they didn't seem like they were enjoying it. I was like, damn, I don't know if I want to be tied down to a shop. Like, mm. So I, it, it wasn't at first my thing. I wasn't going to do a barbershop. Mm. Um, I just wanted to jump right into barber school. I was like, let me open a barber school. That seems where the money is. You know? right. <laughs> and uh, so that was my initial immature thinking. Um, but ultimately, I did. I anchored down somewhere finally pretty well. And that was a shop called Sully's. I was like the second second barber hired there. And that's in uh, Mesa. Yes. Southern Extension. Mm -hmm. And uh, shout out to Sully's Kevin, Mr. Kevin. And um, <clears throat> I worked there for a while and had a pretty good relationship with Sully. Bless his heart for putting up with me, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> and bless all the barber shops hard because I, I honestly I was one of those barbers that obviously was, I was I was jumping around, you know I was really kind of just all about myself. Mm. And uh, but Kevin really put up with me and let me shine in that shop. Mm -hmm. um, and I learned a lot from him on how to run a successful barber shop without having to be there all the time. And uh, I think he's open like his shop is open like six a.m. to midnight. Yes, every day. <laughs> I'm like, man, and it's different. It was different than yeah. most shops I went to. It was clean, you know. So, and he, um, he was like a military dude, so he had that kind of military edge. But yeah, I got a lot of game from him, and then met some barbers over there and started my East Valley real kind of lane, like gaining a name. Mm -hmm. and doing designs and everybody knows pesos that guy you know i think the competing barbershops at that time was like chicago's looking good it was my guy caesar was over there mm -hmm. and uh he had been there for a minute and um there was a couple other barbers in there but him and ali nappy by nature nappy by nature yep. and uh oh, what was another big one um oh al had a shop 360 360. Remember Al? Yes. Al Cutter. I yes. haven't heard from a shout out Al Cutter. <laughs> <laughs> Another man. Bless his soul. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, yeah, Al had a shot. So I was a hitting shop out here in the east side. Um, but that's where I kind of started my east side career. And then I think from there, that's when I went to Nappy by Nature and I was there for a little while. Yeah. 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 That's where I felt. I, re I was real confident. Let me come up in here, you know. And, and I'm like, okay, I remember uh, Ali was like, oh, okay, you're confident. Man, did they haze me, bro? Oh, my gosh. I got so hazed at that shop, um, especially by, what was my man that was the coldest in the shop? Come on. I could not keep a drink out of his hand. <laughs> Ty. Ty. You remember Ty? <laughs> I'm trying to remember Ty. Ty I, 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 I remember the name. Tyrone. Honestly, Tyrone. I still see him once in a while <laughs> in the streets on the BMA. He got a lipper print BMX. I don't think he's cutting no more. But I'll tell you, when I got there, he was so cold with it. It yeah. was ridiculous. Freestyle designs off the top. Yeah. And he, he, was, he could just control the shop, the crowd. Like, he could just run the, the mood of the, you know what I mean? His He had, and that dude had something. Yeah. You know, and uh, it's kind of sad to see. I seen him what it's become. That sucks, you know. But remember when I went there, he was a star. Yeah. And uh went through it with him a lot. He put a lot of hazing on me, but I also built my chops up real good over there, killed it. Everybody was like, Oh, this dude could cut black, he could fade. Yeah. He could cut black hair. And that's really what I started on. Mm. You know, so it was kind of a unicorn. You know, they didn't know what I was. White dude, what's he Mexican dude? <laughs> Killing it with the cuts though. <laughs> So and, uh, I'm sure people want to know what yeah. what are you? You know, I'm still trying to figure out what I'm American. That's what I say. Can a motherfucker be American? Shit! Stop. Damn. Good. Everywhere I go, you know. But uh, no, you know, I'm from the Southwest, so I got Chicano roots, and um, yeah, uh, my, I found out like got some Creole in there somewhere. Yeah, I don't know, I don't know, but mostly Chicano. Yeah, and for all y'all don't know, that don't know what Chicano is, my Chicano's like yeah, 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 yeah. but uh, Chicano is uh, should be spelled with an X, 
but uh, it's like the natives that lived here when this was Mexico mm-hmm. and then the border, as we say, we didn't cross the border, the border crossed us. Right. You know, and uh, became Chicanos. Yeah. So those are my roots. So that's like native and Spanish, I guess, and mi- whatever mixed in. Yeah. Just American. Just good old American. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> so fast forward in your career uh, to to where you are a shop owner. What 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 only because I know you were and I know you are now. So what 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 was that point where you decided that, you know what, this is what I want to do? Because it was right now you're kind of at that point you you you're flighty, right? You're kind of all over the place and Yeah. You know, I mean, really, I knew what I was doing. Yeah. Uh, so I didn't mean to cut you off. No, you good. Go so, ahead. So yeah, I, I knew what I was doing. I knew I was just collecting. Yeah. Information and game. I was collecting game from right. wherever I, I could go and get it, you know. So I went gotcha. to the dopest barbershops and I, I went to high-end salons. Okay. Cuz they loved barbers at that time and they yeah. still do, but at that time I, I like I said I was like a unicorn like I came in there and I'm like approachable, yeah. you know, and they're like, you can fade, you can fade black hair. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> There's some gold look at you. What? <laughs> and uh, so, like I said, it was like a unicorn. So I'd be in these high end, like Ganey Village yeah. or Dolce, and I'd be the top dog in there, boy. Yeah. Just like, bring them in. All my boys would come in and be like, oh, shit, some honey's in here, you know. Yeah. And uh, so I did that, and then. Because I was doing that a lot. I would actually work at a barbershop, and then I would, like, do part-time at a salon, too. Gotcha. Trying to get all the bread. Plus, I was right. doing a little other shit on the side. Right. <laughs> and, uh, but I finally felt, got into, like, what I felt was why I needed to just be independent. I had the ability to do it. But I, I was playing with the idea. Um, I finally went to this spot called, so originally it was Dolce, top high-end salon. Mm-hmm. Then it got bought out later, and I went back there again. So I was there as Dolce. Um, that's in Chandler. It got bought out later by a ball player, Mr. Hobson, him and DRC, Dominic Rogers, Comarty, and I was one other ball player, I forget. But they bought it and they turned it into a celebrity closet. Do you remember that? Over down uh, by the mall. Yeah, Chandler Mall. Yes. That yes. big faci- that the yeah. yeah. So there was the Dolce was still there, uh-huh. the salon, but Dolce had a building over here that was Dolce's barber and spa back in the day, uh-huh. and they hired me. So it was a bunch of honeys in like pencil skirts. Everybody had it on TV. We had a shark in the tank. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, and this was though I had assistant. We had assistants, client coordinators. Yeah. yeah. And uh, one of the amazing people that I met there, I don't know if you're familiar with the radio stations out here, but Natasha Castles. Yes. Uh-huh. So she was the client coordinator. Mm-hmm. And a little short story about Natasha Castles. Love her to death. She's amazing. I remember she was like contemplating, you know, like what I should do. What do I want to uh, do? This? Like, what do you want to do? Like, I want to be on the radio. I was like, go get on the radio, man. <laughs> Waste your time when we were doing this. I remember having that with that talk with her, and then that, years later, like she She's got on a the good, radio. She, yeah. real career too, yeah. you know. Yeah. So that was awesome to see. Um, but yeah, so anyway, that was Dolce. Somebody bought that out. They turned into Celebrity Closet later. So they hit me up. Get what homegirl's name she was trying to get me at this point. I was cutting at Clippers um, on the east side with my boy Chris, yep, uh, my boy KD, who else was over there, uh, Waukesha, uh, my boy David, uh, Loriano, who yeah. was OG, you know, yeah, Puerto Rican cat, yeah, like a Puerto Rican kind of like Ali or something, <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, uh, they all worked there, so I was working there. My name had been built up. She was trying to get me. I go to Celebrity Closet, told Chris I'm out and I go do this. She's gonna pay me all this money, went over there. Kind of was too good to be true. Mm. I wasn't tripping. Um, I got some other, I met some other friends there. I met my boy, uh, Michael Martinez, and he was tattooing actually there. Mm. So they had the massage rooms, the old massage rooms. He had a tattoo room back there. I didn't have any tattoos. I was telling myself I was never going to get tattoos just to be different. And uh, I met him and he was like, bro, I was like, man, maybe I should experience. I was 28 at the time. I just had my first child. And he was like, yeah, you can get your child's name. That'll never change. Because I was like, I changed my mind too much. <laughs> and he convinced me. I got my first tattoo. And then they started playing with his money, too. And we linked up and was like, yo, bro, let's go get one of these studios. Yeah. And just open our own barber tattoo spot. This shit mm-hmm. already hits. Right. And so we did that. Um, and that was in Chandler on Warner and McQueen. And it was called the Vesuvio's Salon Studios. Yes. And we called our spot the Man, Le- you've been all up in my neighborhood all, all this time. Oh, <laughs> that's where you at? Yeah, that's a good area. That's cool. 
And uh, so all, all, I mean, everything, Mesa, everything, right. where, everything you, know. you named, I know all those spots that you're talking about. So, uh, yeah, we went there and we opened a spot called The Loved and Hated. And, uh, uh, and we and who knows who which one was the loved and which one was the hated. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he was doing tattoos and I would be doing cuts and crazy designs and we just did no promo. Twitter had just dropped, you know. Mm. Facebook was <clears throat> kind of still hitting. Instagram was good, uh, but social media wasn't huge. It was big. It wasn't where it is now. Right. Um, but we, just without no promotion, man, just word of mouth, like yeah. just blew up. Like be there till two, three in the morning, cutting, doing tattoos. And be back in there early in the morning. Right. And uh, that was a cool experience. From there, I wanted to open the shop. I knew it was like, you know, we got to upgrade this. Okay. And I was looking on Mill Avenue. Mm. And I was thinking Mill Avenue would be perfect. And I was I was scouting a place. And I scouted a place. I found a dope spot. I talked to, to the manager. Started negotiating. And hadn't signed any paperwork quite yet. Started negotiating. Then I got popped for some illegal underground activities. And uh, so they took all the money and all the things that were going to allow me to make any more money. <laughs> all of that was taken, and I kind of had to start from scratch from jail on mm. um, on uh, felony furlough. Mm. So my last bit of time I got to do felony furlough where you get to leave the jail, yeah. leave Tent City, and go to work. This episode is brought to you by Leonetti's Barber Supply. We've been in the barber supply business since 1968, helping barbers deliver their best haircuts. We're located at 1633 East McDowell Road, Phoenix, Arizona, 85006. We've got everything you need. We've got your clippers, we've got your trimmers, we've got your disinfectants, everything you need to help you deliver your best haircut. Now let's get back to this episode. And uh, all I had was my skills. I mean, which was nothing because when you listen, anytime you're locked up, if you got barber skills, you can use that inside, outside. And it really, you know. I mean, listen, when you got a gang of clients from the streets in there, they're like, oh, this is my most <laughs> barber. It was like five items, motherfucker, five <laughs> items. They're trying to tell you, you got to cut pies of this way, you got to cut wood. No, nah, I cut it whoever I want or I ain't cutting. Right. <laughs> you know, and pe- man, so I was in there, so I got my skills and I had this plan of how I was going to do this barber tattoo shop. But when I was in there, uh, the partnership that I had kind of withered away with my boy. He had to do his own thing, you know, and, and uh, God bless him. And he does his own thing. Awesome, amazing. T- uh, most of my work is from him, Michael Martinez, shout out. And uh, how, how long were you in? What was the, you know, maybe coming in and out? I mean, I know you had the, the furlough, so what was oh, the, Only time? months at a time. Yeah. Um, I think that was like four months. Okay. Uh, I got... I didn't say nothing. So I'll tell you this. Number one thing, if you guys get popped for anything ever, you think you can talk your way out of it, shut them up, man. First thing you need to do, play cool. You're not sure what's going on. You need to talk to your attorney. All the way through, they'll word, reword the question and try to get you to answer and tuck on your emotions and think you can talk your way out of it. Shut up. Don't say nothing. And that's what I did. Mm. And I had been on probation before and completed successfully. Mm. So that worked in my favor. So I was quiet. And I completed probation, and they were like, you know, I got minimal time for a lot, for a mm. decent amount. At that time, for something that was illegal, it's not illegal no more. Right. But I think at that time it was like nearly 20 pounds, and like some of it they considered narcotic because it was uh, processed. Keef, mm. mm. powdered weed. So anyway, uh, that's enough about my bads. <laughs> <laughs> all together, it was months at a time, but I probably all together <laughs> done maybe a couple of years. You know, county times. Mm. So what, what, what was it like coming out? You already had a game plan, right? Uh, and rebuilding. What was that process like? Well, I, I had that game plan, but I didn't have any money. Yeah. And uh, I had to get out and find a job. Mm. So I was like, what am I going to do? And I started looking on Craigslist for barbers, and I found something about Somebody wants to open a barber shop near the university. And I'm, so I was like, I go up there on the days that I had out. I have my car still, and I'm trying to scout where is this place trying to open a barber shop. And I'm like, where would it be a good place to open a barber shop? And I sent them all. At, by that time, I had a website. Mm. I had already, this was in 2014, I think. 15, no, 15, no, wait, wait. 2010, mm. 2009. My bad, I'm tripping. <laughs> Dang. Yeah, they, yeah. The wait, wait, hold on. Hold on. See, that's, man, let me think about this. <laughs> 
2009. No, 2010. Sorry, 2010. So I'm sco- I'm scoping around, and uh, I don't see the spot. And I look online on uh, Craigslist, and I see a dude was like trying to open a barbershop. I sent him all like my website and pictures of the dope work I had done before. I was already like taking appointments online that you could book your appointment before any of those apps came out. And he didn't bite. So mm. I, I sounds like, yo, this dude should want to open a shop with me. I'm dope. <laughs> and so I was like, maybe I'm too dope. <laughs> so I sent him an email. Or I sent him a phone, a picture of like a like a pixelated ass cut. <laughs> Look like I sent it from a damn flip phone. Yeah. And he hit me up. I was like, wow, I read this dude. He did hit me up right away. Yeah. And he was like, yeah, yeah, let's do this shit. Like, come on, check it out. And I uh, established with him this thing called Barbershop 103. Mm. He had the bread, and I had the plans and the skills and the license and all that. And uh, so we laid that out, and that shit popped. Yeah. I popped and became Barbershop 110. Yeah, and we named it one hundred three and one ten because we was like, "What should we name it?" He was like, "He wanted to name it. Uh, he didn't want to name it after him." And I was like, "Man, shit, Barber one hundred three, Barber one hundred three, yeah, Barber shop one ten, yeah." And uh, so yeah, we established that, and I worked there with him, uh, Dante. Shout out to Dante. I hope you're doing well, brother. And uh, yeah, man, it just developed that Barber shop one ten, and that was his still. Yeah, right. Yeah. So after. Talking with him, I wasn't really able to grow anymore. I decided to leave mm. and started doing house calls. And I linked up with one of my longtime clients and was like, hey, let's open a barber shop clothing store. I think maybe he came to me. And he had mm. a business partner, one of his boys, and we started Elite on Scottsdale Road. Elite yeah. Cuts and Clothes. Yeah. And that was 2012. Um, 2012. On December 21st. I remember because the day that wor- the world was supposed to end according to the Mayan calendar. <laughs> and I was like, no, it was December 22nd. We had the next day. It was a survivor's party. And they, they had a clothing line called, uh, gosh, it's hard. To, I forget the clothing line at that time. But they had a shirt with like the Mayan calendar. Mm. You know, so they dropped that. And was like, no end in sight is what it said. And that was the whole theme of it. Yeah. Starting a new, a new existence. Yeah. So you're on you're on Scottsdale Road. You got the shop. They're going and and then you decide to what's next, you know, and and, and I think that's uh around the time you probably met Jerome, uh who is my father-in-law and uh doing the barber uh direct sales to the barber shops. Um and then uh you if I can remember correctly, we were just talking about it about the show. Right. So what lead me up to that point about like, you know, OK, what happened between the time you started the shop to get to the point to where I'm going to throw my own show? Right. Uh, OK. So that was the Elite Barber Championship. But what brought me from Elite uh, Cuts and Clothes on Scottsdale Road to that point was, uh, yes, I did. I know Jerome for a minute. All the barber shops I always see him linking up with him. And uh, there was another gentleman that I met by the name of Adris. Yes. You know Adrice. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. What's he go by? I think he go by something like Woo Wop. Woo Wop, yes. Woo Wop. Uh-huh. So I was getting my clock, my shot. And my, the Boost Juice. The Boost Juice. So prior <laughs> to the Boost Juice, it hadn't come out yet. But he had just started getting down on these drop top Woo Wops. Mm-hmm. That's what he called them. Now they call them the skeletons. But when he was dropping them, this is 2013. Yeah. Now he was doing it in 2011 already. Mm-hmm. Right, and I had been sharpening my tool. So he would chop the top of the top of the blade. He would sharpen that a little bit. Yep. And then he course zero gap it, and then he cut off the plastic. Right. Right. Still the quarter clipper. I mean, that was. Had Game you seen changer. that before? That Game changer. No. I, that was the first <laughs> I'd ever seen that. I was like, oh my gosh. So he gave him to me. I was like, let's go. I was loving. This is everybody that I've seen. Like, what the fuck? What I, let me see. I was like, yeah, it's that new boy, right. you know. Because I'm, I'm still feeling like a rapper at the time who's a barber, right? Like, yeah, you know. <laughs> and uh, that's when I was flossing my tools. Yeah. I've always been an Andy's dude. So um, so anyway, Dries hits me up. He was like, can you do design? You do designs, right? And I was like, yeah. He's like, uh, can you do portraits? And I said, never did a portrait in my life. But I was like, hell yeah. I've always <laughs> been that type of barber. I can do anything, man. Right. Let me see. Whatever I got to do, I'll do it. I went to school, shouldn't I? Yeah. And uh, 
So I was like, hell yeah, I can do a portrait. And he was like, cool, we're going to go to L.A. I'm going to pay for everything. And I'm uh, you're going to rep the, the woo wop. I'm going to give you a shirt. And I'm going to put you in this battle. I said, cool. Never been in a battle in my life. So in between time, there was like a little, there was a little battle here that was at, um, uh, what's her name, school on the, on 35th Ave. Yadira's school. Yes, yes. Is it still there? Uh, yes. Yes. Still okay. There. God bless yeah. her too. Hey, yep. Yadira. <laughs> what's the name of her school? Uh, in Yosos. In the in the Hoso, something in the Hoso, like that. Yeah. yeah, in yeah, the yeah. Hoso. Uh, like that. So yeah, um, sh- they were having a barber battle there, yeah. and me and my boy went, got in there real quick. Didn't win. We got like little plaques to say we, you know. But that was my first barber battle experience. I was like, this was cool. Yeah, was cool. It was kind of bland. Um. But then he told me, let's go to this one in L.A. So by this time, uh, I was on Instagram. Instagram was getting popping. There was some dope barbers on Instagram. I was following them. Like, damn, I thought I was cold. I was like, Loki, like, yo, these motherfuckers fade just tight, bro. Like, what are they doing? Some of these barbers I was following in L.A. and Texas. And I'm like, wow, inspired me. So he's like, uh, well, let's go to L.A. We go out there. It's um, East L.A. And uh, Steven's Steakhouse is where the barber thing was held. So all my East L.A. bought those out there, you know, by Steven's Steakhouse. Uh, went over there, and it ends up being a uh, tournament. It's called the Elite Eight Tournament. Mm. How fitting, right? Elite. Right, right. And I go up there, and I'm the only dude that's not from L.A. It seems like everybody's, like, home hometown heroes flossing. Right. Yeah. You know, they flossing up there. They got, like, they, it's a barber. <laughs> The culture, I was like, wow, I've never seen this underground barber battle hardcore like this. And um, they had judges, DJs, and it was a party. So I was starting to see the barbers that I was following on the gram. So I was a little bit starstruck. Yeah. Diego, uh, the barber, uh, Diego, I don't know, what's his name? But he he has a brand called The Strand. He was really dope. DJ ID Gaff. Uh, Fade Master and Edward Clipper Hands or some other barbers in LA. Yeah. They were really dope. I was following them. Um, and I got to meet these guys. I was like, oh, these guys are way colder than me. <laughs> way cold. I'm just go up here and have a fun time because obviously these motherfuckers is way colder than me. I've seen it. I've seen all the work. I was I didn't think that much of myself. I guess. Yeah. And uh, went into that battle. Had the first round. They give you a uh, an envelope and say basically. Oh no! First they say just freestyle. You get an hour. Mm-hmm. And I just freestyled on one of my boys. I brought up there and I gave him like the part, like a little design, and I made it to the next round. And I was like, okay, all right, shh, what? The tournament style. Right, right. Okay. They have judges, and I am barbarism. I don't know if you follow him. Yeah. So he yeah. was one of the judges. Okay. Him and uh, the Capcom was the name of the, uh, Champcom, excuse me, was the name of the, the company that was throwing it, and it was this new company coming out at the time. They were brand new called Layright. Mm-hmm. And uh, so this is their first thing that they were throwing their event, right? And I met the owners of Layright or whatever, and... Champcom was throwing the event. He had a belt up, and uh, it's for the Ultimate Barber Championship. They had honeys out there with bikinis on, holding the <laughs> belt. Cold DJ, you know, people out there in the stands. And then the next round comes up, and it's uh, another envelope. You get a little bit longer to do it. Hour, I think still hour fifteen maybe. And you had to duplicate this whatever this logo. So we did that. I go in, I'm just doing my thing. I'm trying not to look at anybody. I'm dancing because the music's hitting. I'm just, I'm a performing artist when I'm barbering. If you ever come to the barbershop, you see I'm moving, I'm dancing, I'm flowing. You know, it's just, it's part of who I am and how I do my thing. So I'm just being me and uh, doing the best I could. And then end of the thing comes, they go deliberate, judges come back and they were like, oh, oh, I didn't make it. Mm. I was like, all right, hey, I made it. That's cool. It was a good time, you know? And they said, oh, wait, hold up, hold up, hold up. It sound like that. Hold on, hold on, you know the DJ. <laughs> and it was like, oh no, the unfadeable Blade Brown, you did make it. It's like, oh, it's my boys from Arizona. Like, oh. So this, <laughs> right. So this barber from Arizona is like, who the fuck is this dude? <laughs> and it's like the previous year the champ was there. Yeah. And uh, so we go into the third round, and it's Mexican Independence Day. I didn't realize this. And they give you an envelope and they say, now you got an hour and a half to do this one. They pull it out and it's a. Uh, Emiliano Zapata. Mm. So a portrait of him, and he's a famous um, military, I think, rebel. I really don't know the history of Emiliano Zapata, so mm. my bad. But anyway, he's a famous person for Mexican Independence Day. I had to do a portrait of him on somebody's face. And uh, I was like, here's my first time doing a portrait. And uh, having a good time, and I did my thing, and it was me against this other dude. And 
lo and behold, I fucked around and won. And they hit me with this belt and like a thousand dollars, and I got the wop on, and the drinks like, yeah, you know. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> hey man, I won that damn. You know, they came and put the belt around me. And I was like, yeah. this is amazing. I got a belt. Yeah, I've like, kept a champ. Like this is crazy. And uh, oh my bad. Um, these sunglasses, these glasses, they got a little headphones. Somebody's calling me. Oh okay, <laughs> uh, but. They got cameras too. <laughs> they ain't on. They ain't on. Um, so yeah, I did that. Became the, became that champ, that ultimate barber champion. Shit really blew my head up. Like I was really boosting my confidence. I won't say blew my head up, but it boosted my confidence a lot. Right. I was like, oh, sh- I'm, I am here. Yeah. And uh, I came back, and I thought there was so many dope barbers out here too. I was like, I want to put a show on out here. Like I want to highlight. How dope the barbers, the people that have inspired me though. Yeah. You know, and um, I think I could do that. And started putting together my uh, my girlfriend at the time, who was uh, my youngest son's mother. She also did hair, and she helped me out with that immensely. I had Al Cutter was even helping me out with that thing. Of course, uh, Possible Pat um, over there at the Monarch put me on, gave me that opportunity to do that. And uh, all the barbers that even just showed up yeah, it was really dope. And so I just really wanted to highlight other barbers. Mm-hmm. That's what really triggered me to do that. It wasn't like I was trying to make a huge profit. I just like fell so much in love with this new thing that I saw in this barber culture. I already loved being a barber. Right. But then I just became the champ of like this underground barber fight league, like battle. Like what? Yeah. This was amazing. I want to share this with everybody. <laughs> and yeah. Uh, so, yeah, put that thing together and through the elite barber championship. My bad. Now you good. The Elite Barber Championship, and and so that was a big success. I remember uh, being there, and uh, you know, so drop some of the names that you brought out because a lot of people don't know. They think that you know these are just people that are just popping now, but you had brought them out, yeah, years oh, ago. Drop man. those names. So let's see who was out there. <laughs> uh, gosh, I want to. There was some. Well, anyway, first off, I want to say Az Young Az. So yeah. rest in peace. Tragic situation what happened to my man, but he was there. He won the actual uh, thirty minute uh, no guard fade, no guard skin fade. He won that. Um, my man Eric, I think Ayala from uh, uh, excuse me, <clears throat> I didn't put, mean to put your government out there, player. My <laughs> <man>. <laughs> Eric from over at Cutthroat in Old Town Scottsdale. He won the shave battle, and it was the first ever shave battle. And I wanted to really implement things that barbers were doing. Like in real life, because right. there were other battles, and I wasn't aware when I came out here. I heard a couple of them, like where Pierre was involved in those hair battles, yes. right? So more like the black hair battles, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? And I didn't, I didn't really know about them until I met Pierre. I was like, oh shit, that was going on too, because Pierre was the champ of that. Right. This dude was putting builders. He did. He Pierre showed up. Yes. She, Pierre battled in the first one. He didn't win because it was nobody think, was ready for that. They weren't ready for that. Yeah. That was hair. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, but it was dope to have him. Yeah. Rest in peace. I just realized, you know what I mean? Yeah. R.I.P. Rest in Paradise, my G, because that's big name. Yeah. Big name, Pierre. Cool cat. Yeah. And uh, just amazing dude. But um, he was there. Let's see. We had Pacino's over there, did a class. We had Lisa Gore from Wall. This is before Pacino's had a brand brand. I don't right. even think he had a product yet. He was just doing <laughs> classes with dope photos, stunting with them cold ass cuts, right? And uh, he was just a star based off that. Um, who else was there? I had this other guy came out, and his name was Jeremy Knott. Have you ever he- heard of him? I'm not familiar with him. I would say he's infamous. He ain't really well known. It's like an underground rapper. He's an underground barber. He had okay. his license. He was from Albuquerque, New Mexico, but he really, I don't remember this viral photo went back then. It went viral, and it was a picture of three heads, and they did the Last Supper across it. Mm. Do you remember that? Yes. Yeah. I so he did that. that. And yeah. he, he had big tattoos on his face. And he, mm. you know, he was kind of a brilliant, you know, genius kind of vibe, but real also not that good with people. Okay. But I brought him out and he did a Muhammad Ali across three heads. Yeah. As a demo. Um, we had a bunch of people come over there. Dre, he was there. He was still a young, but yeah. he was just getting started, <laughs> man. Yeah, doing his thing. Uh Gosh, man, they'll come to me, but there's a lot of people that were there that are that are popping now. Yeah. Um, I want to say Phil. So the Tucson Barbers yeah. came through. Uh who, who is some other name from Tucson? I don't know. Shout out to my Tucson Barbers. Oh, you know, 
Did you ever meet this dude named Feezy? No. Big boy from Tucson, totally yeah. tatted. Yeah. But he was a well-known barber. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. So you brought out a lot of people who are now just big in the industry now. Oh, yeah. We know, didn't even, I, didn't meet, I forgot A-Rod, Marcus, A-Rod. P, Marcus P. Hatch, and uh, Papito Bless Hands. They told they were like, hey, we'll just come out there, bro, because we want to be involved. They yeah. came out, and they got hype on it, too. Uh, Natasha Castles hosted it. Yeah. Um, I have my Capoeira group. A lot of people don't know. I've always been a martial artist. I was heavy in Capoeira. I shed Capoeira. Shout out. I shed Capoeira. So I brought my group out that I trained with, and they did a demo. Did you see that demonstration? Yes. With the straight razor? Yes. Because that's the the weapon in Capoeira is a barber's razor. Okay. And so they got to do a game where we play the, the basically the training that we do with the barber's straight razor. Yeah. Um, who else was out there, man? It's, yeah. you, had, you had a lot of people out there, and I, yeah. I remember it was a good time, and that was really kind of one of our first uh, shows that we did as a vendor. And so – you know, it was it, it was a good time. Um, so now that that fast forward to where are you at now? Where what, what's happening with you now? You're you're on Mill Avenue or very close to it, right? Or I'm I'm the address is on Mill. Okay. Uh, the building I'm in is on Mill. However, my suite is just about maybe like fifty or fifty fifty yards in, like yeah. uh, uh, east. Of Mill Avenue, so mm-hmm. you just a little bit walk, you know. We're right across the street from Varsity Tavern. Yes. Um, so that's Elite on Mill. Uh, yeah, man, I had two elites. Uh, sold one. I actually partnered with Kool Aid, him and I became business partners um, at one point, mm-hmm. and uh, bought it with him. And then we sold that, made some, made a little profit off that. And then uh, I had I started another one uh, with Wendy Cuts Hair uh, Blur Lines. Partnered mm-hmm. up with her to do that one. Mm-hmm. And then she bought me out of that one. And then um, shout out to her, too. She still got a dope shop. I think she just opened a new one. And then uh, I opened another a salon right next to the barbershop I'm on now. I'm at now. But that one didn't quite work out. Mm. So kind of shut that one down. But kept the lead on mill. It's a three-chair barbershop. Um, got a tight squad over there now. Uh, we got the doors are always open, usually, except when it's blazing hot. <laughs> um, loud music going. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's lit, yeah. man. Yeah. So you you've you've had so much experience. Uh you've gained a lot of knowledge. You've done a lot of things, seen a lot of things. And so uh you know, as we wrap it up here, take, can you tell me give me something that you would just some advice that you would just give an up and coming barber, a new barber, uh what would you share that, you know, if there's one thing you could leave with them, what would that be? Man, figure out what you want to do in this game. Do you just want to be a fader? You want to take it to the limit? Because this uh, this hair industry, the barber industry is part of the hair industry, but the barber industry is like its own subculture. You can do so many things. Right. It's like I, when I first got this license, like this is a license to hustle because there's so many aspects of the barber hair industry. Yeah. Whether you want to make a product, you want to do some platform stuff and teach classes, you want to be an instructor, you want to own a barbershop, own a school, do merch, you know, uh, do podcasts. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, you know, find out what you want to do and go hard in it. And don't yeah. be afraid to carve your own lane. Right. You know, carve your own lane, stand firm, and do your thing. Yeah. Uh, that, 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 that is what I get from you. you, you you've you made your own path. <clears throat> made my own path. You know, path, you didn't bro. follow a traditional route or, uh, you know, a, a, a blueprint. You created your own, right. you know, through the ups and the downs. That's what you're supposed to do in yeah. life, ain't it? Yeah. You're supposed to create your own path. I mean, you got the all the elements here. You know, we're born with everything. Here, Earth, you know the elements that make us up. Just make make your own path. It's not going to be easy, right? But uh, as long as you love it, it it'll be a lot easier if you didn't love it. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm blessed to love what I do. And at um, 29 years in the game, 20 20 something years in the game. Yeah. I mean, I'm healthy. I, I enjoy it. I pay my bills. I take care of my family. Yeah. And uh, I have a great time. My last final question for the day is when. What do you like to do when you turn off the clippers, shut off the lights, close down the shop? Put unfadable brown is unfadable black brown. <laughs> <laughs> unfadable brown sounds like a stain, man. Like, you got a stain. You got some of that unfadable brown. Unfadable blade fr- brown. I'm still gonna mess it up. I'm still gonna mess it up. <laughs> unfadable. Blade Brown, but I my, got it. I'm Daniel, though, you know, and, yeah. and a lot of people know me. I go by Daniel. Yeah. Unfadable Blade Brown, that's my Instagram. <laughs> but gen, my, the genuine me is Daniel. If you know me from back in the day, you may know Peso. And, uh, but those are all me. Um, but, yeah, at the end of the day, 
you know, I just uh, I really love to train martial arts, man. Yeah, um, a lot more Muay Thai right now. Mm. Uh, but you know, I, I like to do that a lot, and I like to play music and like you know, I play a little ukulele and uh, what else I like to do. That's pretty much yeah. That's yeah. it, man. Take care of myself and chill. Kick it with my kids. Yeah, you know I I, I value my time alone because I'm so much in the mix. So when I'm home, I take days off to just chill with my kids, chill with my family, chill with my girl, just kick it. You know what I mean? And that's what I really enjoy in my life that yeah. I've been able to build with this amazing yeah. art. That is just I can't believe it's a job. Yeah, <laughs> you know I really can't because I'm just, just talking. <laughs> you like I said, you created your own life. You know, you you really did that. So. We certainly appreciate you coming by today, man. Is there any final last words you would have to say uh, of anything? Oh, man. <laughs> Ain't no last words. This is this is getting started, player. <laughs> I'm just getting started. I'm, I'm here, baby. This is it. I'm launching it off. Just look out for me. Elite on me. Love Fatable Blade Brown, my boy. Blessed by Luce. We got Isaac Face. Come on and see me. <laughs> and there you have it. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Shout out to all the barbers out there. The whole game. Not for real. I love all y'all, man. Uh, do your thing. Make sure that you're uh, 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 being a an example. I will say that. Yes, sir. If you keep that on your mind as a barber, you know, I think you're gonna go a lot of places. You're being an example. You're gonna a lot of people are gonna learn from you. Yes, sir. Man, we certainly appreciate you coming by, sharing your story, and, and your testimony of uh, uh, of where you came from and to where you are now. Thank you. Um, and so, man, I wish you all the best, and we look forward to doing something together. I don't know, you know, you never know where oh yeah where, where our paths uh, will cross again. So, uh, thank you all for tuning in to this episode of the Barber Block po- Podcast, where we definitely have had real barber, uh, real people, real talk, and we'll see you on the next episode. Peace.